Hey guys, this is Kirob speaking and today we are back in the Cyclist Tactics with the official demo version that is now out. And I'm, uh, yes, just playing that one. So if you're interested in what you're seeing, go get it via the link down below. Um, nothing in here is dev at the moment, so it's all exactly the same as you would be playing. So let's see, what are we going to embark on here? I think I'm going to start a little mini-series. A little mini-series? Does that make it a micro-series? No, let's call it a mini-series. Uh, a mini-series in which we are going to race the available stage race. A seven-day race that is hosted by Ahana, the Free Country Challenge. And it passes through the um, uh, territories of Ahana. Gasmia and Froenia. Um, after the map reveal, this now all makes a little bit more sense with the geography that is there. But uh, what are we going to aim for? Well, we are going to aim for everything because uh, that is how I roll. Uh, we are going to try and win overall. We are going to try and get the uh, green jersey as well as the mountain jersey. I'm not going to use the default riders for this, but rather customize them a little. And um, probably best to first generate the tour and then start customizing you guys. So uh, this button here regenerates the tour as a whole. And that means that we first and foremost can change around what this time trial is going to be. Although you would be able to do that like that by just clicking along yourself. And you can see that even some no, this is considered a mountain time trial. I'm not so sure. It does have a pretty steep climb there towards the end. But anyway, I'm going to... Oh! Oh, that is quite rare to see. That this one generates a hilly mountain stage. Oh, yes. Two major climbs. Oh, that's pretty epic. Okay, two major climbs in this one. And... Holy sh... Okay, this is... This is like a unicorn generation. So, one of the flat stages generated a light cobble stage. That is possible, uh, but quite rare. And then we have a flattish time trial there, okay. Um, two flat healy. This one is interesting as well, with the two climbs there towards the end. Uh, and then mm, another two turns here, or one, one roll to here and then one across the line. Yeah, that's nice. Oh, wow! Okay, so many. This is... This is... Um, I think we are going to do this one. <laughs> this is looking fantastic. This one entirely flat, but cobble sectors in there. And then we have that one also completely flat. 400, apart from this hill. Hmm, with a few technicals in there. Hmm, not, not too bad. A time trial on the final day. And the other stages. Well, I, I think... I think this one is maybe a little boring after this one, so what I'm going to do is regenerate just this stage and see if we can get something that is a bit more interesting. Um, something that springs to my attention here? Uh, a mostly downhill stage? Oh, a few little climbs. This is interesting terrain. It makes it difficult to calculate for um, how far away the escapees really are. And still a few climbs in here not too bad some severe technical sections there or one and two rough ones yeah but still not now nah. oh this this one is quite harsh um oh this this is another flat one but mostly downhill three sprints uh, i think we're going with this one um pretty shallow incline here at the start to get to the top and the uh the escapees will go away, and then mostly flat, not much technical stuff in there. And then two sprints, and a little bit of a kicker, about 20-ish uh, kilometers, 30 kilometers away from the finish. Equivalent real racing. So that looks fantastic. Uh, this one's superb. Uh, this one we don't need to change. This one is cool. I think the time trial is a little boring, so let's see if we can roll something more interesting than this. Um, we're staying within the archetype. Yeah. Oh, this one is pretty cool. This one is... Wow, okay, this is super long. <laughs> this is a crazy long one. Uh, 132. I 
think I've set the maximum to be a theoretical 120. Uh, but then sometimes it adds on top a full section and a little bit. Um, so yeah, this is <laughs> looking pretty cool. Um, I think we have generated a really cool little stage race here. Such a mixed bag. Awesome. All right. This is what we're going to build our riders for. So let's get into that. All right. I'm going to go with my main rider as a level 11, so slightly higher. Um, that is because that gives me four specialization points. I want to try out something here. I think this would be a very good build for this kind of stage race that we have here. Um, the cobble stage will be a bit of a, or light cobble stage, will be a bit of a pain with the negative one. But the time trial will be exactly in our favor like this because we have plus five, plus four in time trials. So if I activate this, you just see like, bam, <laughs> so strong there. He's so strong. Um, all right, yes. Uh, and then is uh, this um, normal in normal races, normal stages, non-time trials. He has plus two, plus one, plus one. Really shit at sprinting. He can't sprint at all, basically. He, he just moves the maximum he can, and then that's it. Because he can't spend any attack points. Um, minus one in tech. That is nasty. It is much worse than it's what it sounds like because other riders are offsetting their penalties there uh, by having slightly positive skills. Like Dicky McSpeck, who has a plus one, for instance. Um, but Niklas Svensson here, our TT expert, is struggling in those and in the cobble sector. So that will be... I think this will make it quite interesting but also potentially really powerful. We need to make up some good time in the time trial which is on the final day, yes. Uh, and how much do we want to put in here? Four? Do we want to have four recovery? So one thing that is um, not described very well is that on every second recovery point, if you look here in the speed on different terrains, you can see that the green bar is increasing a bit. And that means the threshold for recovery within the stage is moved up by one point. So you can recover better within a stage as well if you have the recovery rating higher. So if you have it at four, there's a threshold increase of two. So you need to not ride as slow uh, to start recovering. The main concept is you get loads of free movement points in a downhill, for instance, 14, and then this threshold determines how much slower than that free movement you have to move in order to start recovering energy. The time trial bonus here also includes some attack points. As you can see there, 23 is what we have set it to, but level 3 gives us an, uh, an additional 6 attack points. Very valuable. Can't use them in the sprint though, so uh, it's only for, for quick riding otherwise. Our third rider is the one who's going for the mount jersey. He's going to attack a lot. And we call him Enzo Chivaldori. Yes. Uh, and that is uh, the, probably the younger brother of Enrico. Um, but he is decent in the flat and in the mountains. And that will be pretty much a perfect combination for those stages where he's escaping and trying to grab some mountain points. Uh, hopefully that is enough. I gave him a little bit of extra attack points, but not extra attack per turn. He doesn't need to be that fast. He just needs to power through and get those points so that he then can start to recover. Unfortunately, uh, does he need... Yeah, he probably needs that recovery here. At least 38% of energy is being recovered, and at max 76%. Um... Yeah, I would like to have a heightened threshold here as well at four, but that would mean six less energy. I think he really needs it. Our helper rider will just be a flat and downhill, and I take that over the sprint because um, he's not supposed to be sprinting. He's supposed to lead out and also be pulling at the front. And this just is a very versatile um, set of stats. You, if you go into the downhill level one, you do get an additional um, tech trait, plus one. 
Very handy, that. And yeah, he has decent stats overall. He can be a little faster if need be. It's all looking excellent. Dickies Raiders, there you have them. Niklas Svensson, Dicky Mechspeck, Enzo Kivaldori, and or Chivaldori, as they said in a German version of Jagged Alliance 2. Um, and the helper, yes, because names are hard, and helper just tells you the full story. And on we go. This is a pretty long first stage that is counted as flat hilly. And what we are going to attempt to do is break away with the breakaway group that goes out uh, from the onset of the stage and try to survive until this final climb. That will be tough. Um, the next stage, uh, or, or we actually just try to get to here and then rest because holy shit, we need some energy for this one. That will be tough. Okay, um, and that then that one. <laughs> That's some rough days coming, coming here for uh, Enzo. Uh, this one has it right at the start, so you don't ca really care. He has enough energy for that one, especially after a stage with no attack being needed and no attack being needed. He has recovered for this one, but for these three, this will be tough, tough going for Enzo if he is going to uh, try and get grab the mount jersey. There's no mountain points in this one either. There can be mountain points in the time trials too. Uh, it's quite fun. So, I think we're ready. We can set it. Do we want to set it up to have a proper high competitive pool? Yes. Let's let's race with a big peloton. Okay, here we go. We have all those teams competing. That's 48 riders. Dicky Max Speck is favored here and Niklas Svensson because of just how strong he is, basically. Um, looking good. And Start the race? Yes. Deki Mechspeck falls back into the peloton. This will be a tough day for him. He has a negative... I haven't talked about his stats yet. Uh, he's a stereotypical sprinter that I've made here. And uh, yes, in real life he isn't, of course, but uh, he has a bit of a punch to him. Um, so this one is not quite correct, the negative one in mountain. But... Uh, I think this will be quite interesting to play with, considering how much mountain there is in these. So, uh, he has a 4 in plus 4 in sprint, so he can really push out some proper attack usage in the um, in the final sprint, which will be great. Plus 2 in downhill, so he can potentially recover a little bit, but uh, plus 1 in technical, getting him through there, plus 1 in flat, just to make it easier overall. Um, all good stuff, all good stats. A proper sprinter and he will just be hiding in the peloton for the most part and so does Niklas now let's sign him off move down the helper is joining the relay and not pulling hard because Enzo needs to be escaping and this looks like there are already a few riders out here who want to form an escape group and with so many teams at the start line I think that escape group will be become quite large potentially let's see what happens that's a very weak move by the peloton so yes the helper is just moving along easy attack from the uh, from the group that is going and Ansel here is just going out he's just using free energy to follow that attack move that must have been initiated by a pretty weak rider oh look at that yes stage racer level 7 Holy shit, he is a little weak. <laughs> Plus one in mountain and has basically no energy. Yeah, but there are some other guys in here. Oh, not too high level. All round a level 10. Oh, he's a... That's a big dude. Okay, well, uh, yes, we are following along. That sounds great. 12 riders up front. That's pretty big. I'm going to move my guys back to P3. And, oh, I deactivate that one again. It's not supposed to be working just yet. Should actually be deactivated. But you can see the numbers. It's working in, uh, as such that it shows you the correct numbers and so on. But uh, it's still looking awkward because it doesn't expand the UI. But, yeah, anyway, um, that is all good. My uh, um, main riders are in P3 now. And what was this move across 
There, this is looking good. There is a um, sprint rating here. I don't think I'm interested in that. Um, I need to focus on the mountain points, so let's save some energy. Oh, that's quite a lot of rain. Uh, the, these these spectators didn't want that. They didn't sign up for that. Um, let's see. what The penalty move there was quite weak. Are they trying to make another move to here and then across? Or are they going to jump? We shall find out very soon. Oh, I was wondering why he had such terrible threshold for recovery. And then I'm looking down here. It's like, yeah. That's a terrifying technical section. You can't move that fast through there, so that's why um, it, there, there is no recovery going on here. So yeah, let's move there. Ooh, the SKPs mean business. That is a big jump. That's a move of 25 nodes. Fortunately, this mountain is pretty shallow. The maximum, um, or the worst slipstream modifier that we have along the way is just minus two. So a move of 25 is generating five slipstream, and minus two from the worst section in there gives us still a three, so it's just an energy move, fortunately. And the Peloton is jumping over this one as well, but back there, in P3, we are getting some nice slipstream. Nine in total, minus two, oh, so not in total. Nine from just the movement speed, and then minus two from the terrain. Now oh, that's good. Okay, so now we need to uh, take a look at this situation. We do have the climb coming up. It's a third category, and very steep at that. So there's not much slipstream bonus going on. And uh, steep throughout, actually. So we do want to jump across in one go, obviously. And I think they want us to do a move to there and then to there. And the AI doesn't know how to sprint for intermediate points just yet. So our mission here is to be at the front and just take the points. I don't think we will be at the front naturally. But we should... Oh, and there's a climber there. Oh, oh the all-rounder is going to pull us. So this guy is going to lead out to here. And then the all-rounder is going to be pushing across. And then we can sprint past him. So I think that is the way to go. Yes, okay. The first move actually happened the way I thought it would. Let's see if they also make the jump uh, the way I would think. And this is a big move again. Lots of slipstream. Eight slipstream here. No technical section in the way? Uh, no, there is a bit of a technical section. Oh, there's Dicky. Yeah, Dicky has a, a pen penalty reduction too, so he doesn't fare too poorly. Oh, you see the difference? That was zero. Was it zero move? Uh, zero cost? I think it was. And Niklas has a free energy cost. That is quite a significant difference. Um, so this is perfect. All-rounder is going to lead across, I'm going to sprint past, and then just fall back. Oh, this bastard! Okay, he actually did not stop there, but rather continued on. And what that does is that it destroys other riders' um, singular bonus. So, if you are a climber, and you have a, um, let's say, bonus of plus two, and zero in everything else, then... Uh, yeah, you, if you move from here to here, only mountain nodes were traversed, which means that you get your normal mountain bonus, which is plus two. But if just if just some little bastard like this all around a uh, level 10 or whatever he is, um, moves one further, then your move includes a downhill node and your trait downhill is zero. So all of a sudden your two um, node advantage or two bonus um, vanishes and becomes a zero. So that's that's nice of him to think of the others in the group like this. Yeah, um, the AI, by the way, already does that. It's uh, it has a advantage calculation it goes through and sees where it is better than the competition and uh, then plays those as it sees fit. And this was definitely one of those moves. So yeah, that's um, 
Go there, sprint past the bastard, and grab the mountain points. And look at that! The others are just like, nah, fuck it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I didn't have much of a choice there. So this was quite an interesting situation. It seemed natural, like the all-rounder was going up to the front, pulling a little harder to make sure that, well, you guys probably don't want to follow me, do you? Do you now? Ah, oh, big move by the peloton. 21 nodes. That's quite hefty. Okay, but they're getting to the bottom of the slope. They're probably going to make a very similar move there. But the SKPs are not slowing down either. Across this technical section, mild technical section, making the big jump. That is very reasonable. Because this section is pretty terrible. Not only does it have only 8 movement points for free, it also comes with the minus 1 technical penalty. You don't want to incur that too. So yes, good move. Oh wow, the Peloton is just crushing it. That is a nasty move. From down there to up there into the down slopes. Um, it's a pretty big one. How quick did they move? Um, is this... Oh, this is where the others moved. So all rounder and these guys were moving a little shorter and he was just hammering it. Okay, Barodeur, level 6. Dicky McSpec, not his favorite move of all time. 9-1. Ouch. Alright, this is going to be a little interesting. We've now reached the final set of hills. If you look at this, they are now trying to go just to there. There are no technical sections in the way, so this is a little simple. Uh, simpler than before over here. And it looks like they're going to make this move. And then I probably want to move there. So let's have a look at what we have for options from there. Can we reach the top? Uh, we actually can. This is going to be a big move. Again, very much penalized in slipstream. Negative four. And uh, some margin there. Um, the question is, can we then jump from there over the next one? The attack points will be lowered by one. And we still have enough attack, so attack points per turn will be lowered by one if we make a max move. So yes, we could end up there and then actually also jump the next one. Hmm, it's probably something I'm going to attempt. Let's see, but first things first, make the first move. We planned like three turns ahead there, or four. And I'm not sure if they are underestimating the power of the SKPs. There's still a decent amount of power in this. I think they would be able to win if they just pulled through. Ah, and with this move being so massive, I think it might be reasonable to consider moving into a place where we have that um, slight slipstream bonus. I think we would be getting one or two in slipstream, even through this section, because of how large a move this is. So I think I'm going to position myself in third. Going to invest another point of energy, even though we're running a little low already. And and see what happens there. Um, this constellation look ooh, they are starting to move up. And I think that is actually a pretty reasonable thing to do. Let's start our slow move up through the Peloton here as well. Yes, okay, they are making this move. So there we go. This is perfect. He's going to uh, try and make the jump and will succeed at it because he is capable of that very thing easily. Level 9 rider, plus 1 in flat mountain and downhill. Dicky and Niklas are coming up into P1, uh, right at the rear of P1, mingled in with the rest. And there we have the move. That is exactly what I want to see. Now the question is if we are supposed to uh, go on the offensive, because from here, if we take a look, we can't actually make the jump. So I think it's valuable uh, to consider moving there um, and see if others are following. So yeah, let's let's go ahead. Let's let's do this attack. The others are like, nah, mate. Oh no, there's there's someone who followed. Who are you? Uh, all around a level 8, okay. Yeah, yeah, that's a good constellation for an, uh, an SKP. 
I... Oh, I've already spent the maximum number of uh, energy and attack points this move. So I can't do anything but pull him. Okay. Well, there we go. Oh. Okay, what happened here? Why is he moving first? Did we do something fishy? Uh, I will have to watch that back and just see what happened there. Uh, I That didn't seem quite right. Oh, no, I know what happened. I know what happened. He went back into the relay after I confirmed, but it was so quick that I can't see it. So, yes, no, this is all correct. This is just normal relay behavior or normal escapee behavior that they do want to resume working together at this point. And this is looking terrible, though, because uh, I can follow, but... Uh, I can't do anything. I can't sprint anymore because I've already used the maximum number of attack points that move. So now we are so close to the finish that I equally well can just finish it off from there and see if I can grab a podium place. And that is a big move. Hello there. It was like, hmm. Okay. So who has moved? <laughs> they moved there. It's marked already by attack points there. And this is Bordeaux and Stage Racer 7 and 6 there. And then we have the move across the, across the hill, big jump, and that is happening at plus three slipstream, led out by the climber. Okay, here we go. Uh, can everyone follow? Including Dicky McSpeck? Yes, even Dicky can follow. And Niklas? Shouldn't have any trouble. I think with the powerhouses that are in the peloton, this is only one turn of advantage here. Yeah, so we do need to move quickly to get to the finish. That's still a fair amount of distance. That is 40 nodes away. That's a good two turns. And I'm the weakest among them. I have no attack points or no attack per turn left. And these guys are pretty strong still. 12 attack points, 12 attack points. Yeah, okay, I'm going to just stay my position and hope that they are going to back to uh, relaying, but I can't imagine that they are going to do that. I think they're in full-out leader mode now and uh, see what happens who can win this. Oh. Oh, that's nasty. Okay. So, one of them is deciding to not do shit. Uh, and we can't really get there in two turns because we're too powered out. I do want to attack him. I do have plenty of energy still. Well, plenty is relative, right? But uh, for this attack, uh, for this energy per turn, I still have plenty. So let me go there so that it counts as an attack so that he can't choose to catch up anymore. He does have the energy too. So yes, we need to use attack points. So that means one uh, rider less to worry about. Let's see if the other one is following. They are not following. Okay. Are they playing a game of chicken? I don't know. Oh, hello there. That is a massive turn. Look at that. Jumping even over, not over, uh, not just over the line, but then uh, going there. That's a 28 node move. Okay, Mechspec, you can just about follow. That's nice. You get the minus one penalty. Not quite as bad for Niklas. Both of these guys still have 8-8 eight, eight as their maximum. I think Dicky is in a pretty bad situation here considering that there are plenty of decent sprinters in here um, probably want to move up but when is the question I mean yeah you now he only has 16 attack points left so I don't think he can afford to uh, I I can hope for a turn where no attack is used no nah, it's not not this oh this is a technical one as well fuck okay it's a mild technical section. So he will offset that, but not the slipstream penalty. So that's shit. Okay, we, we have no chance now but to go max. Just max out. Enzo, go, go. Go, Mr. Chevaldori. Go, go harder. Chevaldori. <laughs> um, um, they are getting very close. <laughs> They are getting very close to Enrico, uh, to not Enrico, to Enzo. That is a big move. 27 nodes. That hurts. 
Uh, 8-5. Yeah, we need to hang in here. There we have a sprinter level 11, but he has no attack points left. Okay, no attack points left, so he's not really that dangerous. Not the wheel we are seeking. All around a level 10? Yeah, he does have some bite to him. Barodeur level, uh, level 10. He has a full move in him still, and plenty of um, sprint, but he can only use it as if he was a normal rider plus one, so that's not too bad. Well, uh, Barodeur level 12. Oh shit, okay. That's the wheel to follow. That is the wheel to follow. Um, but... Yeah, look at that. Uh, I just noticed that if we want to use our full sprint trait thing, then we are at the point where we have... where We can use 12 attack that turn. Um, 8 for the move, maximum. Which we won't need because of Slipstream. But then we can use an additional 4 because of our sprint trait uh, within the sprint reordering itself. So that means that we can use all our attack points this next turn. But I want to get into a position where I am on the correct wheel to start with. And I think the correct wheel, where was he? Is not, not there. Oh, he's decent as well. Uh, what did he have? No, six. Okay, good. Um, downhill, roller, there. Barodeur level 12. That is the wheel. Um, so let's move up there. There, Barodeur level 12. Dicky McSpeck. Okay, I'm in position. I'm in position, guys! And the uh, Niklas is going to serve as a bit of a buffer. Oh, do we... Uh, do we want that? No, he needs all the attack points he can get. He can reserve for the coming stages because that is not going to be pleasant. So let's not do that. Um, so now, that is Enzo. Can he stave off the Peloton? This is a finishing time of 23 26. It's pretty good. That's pre pretty short. Uh, yeah, that is um, less than a third of his turn taken to cross the line. So let's go there. I don't think they can beat that. Or can they? They're just going there. That is weird. I think what I'm going to do here... It was a very slow ride across the line. No proper lead out. Hmm. That means that it will be quite a bit of potential for me to just move up through the field and add some velocity. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Oh, there's free velocity in it already. Ah, oh, this is why we have some momentum blocking there. So let's move to the front. And yes, I'm sprinting past everyone. This costs one attack point per move. Now free for the guy who has built up velocity, which is, incidentally, the one I've been... No? Oh, there is the Barodeur. He has not been able to build up velocity, though. So, um, let's move up further. Now we're past him. Past him. And we can't do shit anymore because we're spent. That is... Potentially opening the door for Niklas. Uh, with an attack that happened before the sprint. We shall see. So, we are now in second place. Hopefully. Let's see if that lasts. Oh, well... No, no, that didn't work out. Ah, yeah, it was too shit. You see that? Another train did overtake us. This was one of those false leadouts. That was uh, a bait. It was a bait. You could just have ridden past them and then, yeah. But if I had done that, then the others had sprinted past me. It was, yeah. That's why you need a leadout rider who just powers through. Anyway. We are going to follow these guys and get a better finish time. And there we have the proper winner. Ah, Sprinter level 7 took it. Well, good on you, mate. You didn't follow the bait like Dickie McSpeck did. There was someone, someone who hung out a bacon bar in front of there and was just like, you come with me, Dickie. And oh boy, he did. Uh, okay, well, he's... <laughs> He can still move across a few placements, placements. Is that worth it? I don't think it's worth spending all our attack 
This would cost us six attack points, and we can't do shit with it. If someone else can... Yeah, if someone else would be easily passing us there, so no, I'm not going to do that. Ah, oh, it's a little frustrating, that finish there, but um, all right. Let's see what that means for us. I'm just going to ride into the finish with my helpers, conserving a little bit more energy, recovering slight amounts so that he's fresh tomorrow. And there we go, we're taking the win with Enzo. What a nice attack. And then you see how that it seemed so, this peloton seemed so far off and in the end it was 0.17 turns away. So yes, they did time it quite well, but failed to consider that Enzo was just mentally too strong. And yeah, we got faked out there with Dicky. That was a fail. Dicky and Niklas finished right there. Dicky won the sprint of the false lead out. <claps> clap, clap. Medium applause. Awesome. Thanks. Thank you very much. Ah, yes. That's one great move by the AI though. Not deliberate for now, but uh, there will be such things going on with the AI in future. Laying false, false lead outs. Um, cool. Uh, that means let's take a quick look at the recovery for the next stage. It looks like the only one who has suffered proper... Oh no, there, there's a bit of suffering here. Wow! Enzo has completely collapsed, but he has recovered up to 75 energy for the next stage. Yeah, that uh, has shrunk his maximum energy return value to 68 from 76. That's pretty poor. And he doesn't doesn't get back all his attack points either. Niklas Svensson has recovered all his attack points, which is great news, and all its, his energy, and only lost 2% of max recovery. So that's pretty good. Pretty good. Um, Dicky McSpeck, helper, is still feeling fresh. That's also great to know. And we do have a few... Uh, we already have one podium placement there, so lots of prestige, which is good to have. Not that it counts for uh, the demo, but uh, we are going to keep an eye on that. Anyway, and the next race is, um, well, that one, and I didn't want to click it. But uh, that is something that we are going to check out in the next episode. Hope you enjoyed, and see you guys next time.